Oh, uh, I, I was I was talking about the e email service. You guys should uh, register and try this first. Uh, Sendgrid.com. Try to register an account. It may take one or two days to uh, activate your account. So. Uh, this Sendgrid is to send emails from your app. When you want to send an email to verify your account. Yeah, so it might take one or two days to validate your account first. Spy? No, it's not a spy. Yeah. Or you can use Mailgun if you have trouble registering an account with SendGrid. So I would try to uh, cover all these or uh, two of these. Uh, the syntax is the same. The logic is the same. The the syntax is a little a little bit different. It's not hard. It's very easy. You can read the doc and try to use them. Okay, right now, go home today and register account on Melgan as well as SendGrid. All right. Let's go to the lab here. Oh, I have a question here. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, try to do both. It doesn't hurt. Okay. <coughs> if Sendry is okay for you, if you activate your account is activated on Sendry, yeah, you don't have to grant an account on Melgan. Okay. And yeah, I refer. Sendgrid is more flexible. You can send email from your application, your, your accounts. But for Melgan, you need if you want to send email to other people, and you want, don't want your email to go to spam, you may need to add a domain. Domain, and you need to validate your domain as well. So Melgan is more restricted, and uh, Sendgrid is more like easy to use. Is it you? Just in case one doesn't work, right? That's it for the email part. All right, let's go to the lab, the part one, handler factory. So as I say, fact, handler factory is a function that return a function, right? A function return a function, and as you can see here, is uh, this is uh, an example code for deleting a review, right? Can someone try to explain what's going on here? You. Mm -hmm. Can you explain what's going on here in the snippet? Yes. From request. So here I skip that part. I actually don't, you don't need anything. You only need the ID, right? So you can put the ID in the params. And this ID is what? Which ID is this? No, idea of the review, yes. And user here is the field inside the review, right? The owner of that review. So you get that ID from the user object. And what, what is it, where is it coming from? Yes, from middleware. All right, there's no set up to my uh, set review, yes. And then if nothing is wrong, and then you just say the uh, status 204, meaning something is deleted. And you can use dot n here to uh, n. And because sending a status 204, you cannot send a JSON body. <laughs> it, 204 means nothing in return. 
in response. Uh, yeah, nothing in response. So that's why you don't have dot JSON. Instead, you have dot n. Okay. And here's the uh, the cast block to um, to cut any error. It's a very simple function, right? Very simple handler. And if you want to delete a the review, you have to do this. If you have to delete a if you want to delete a an experience, you also have to do something like this. And maybe in the future you want to delete something else, then the logic is kind of similar, very similar, right? So why don't we combine all of those functions into one? Okay. So what if I want to delete an experience? What's the difference between that controller and this controller? So which part is different? There. So I have another um, another controller. <laughs> yeah. So which 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 part is different here? I would say this model is different. Yeah. So if I want to find a delete a, an experience, I need to use the experience class, right? And maybe this field is different as well, the user field here. So for experience, I use the field host, right? Not user, are you host? For review, are you user? And that is not wise. So now we have that, the different in uh, the field name. That's harder to uh, cover. But don't worry, inside here, I also have that uh, another way to cover that as well, right? And the variable and the review here, the word review here is just a variable, right? You can name anything. And in this lab, we're gonna name it doc, document, document, right? So it's just a document. It can be a review, it can be a user, it can be an experience, just a document. Anything else is pretty much the same, right? So we're gonna create a function to combine uh, right now, you, you cannot delete a user. Let's not, <laughs> let, don't allow user to do that, right? They can deactivate their account, but uh, don't let them delete their account for now. All right, so let's do it. I'm gonna open my app, previous app. This is where I'm at. Mm. Experience. I only have get and post. So now I'm gonna create one more, delete. And delete, actually use a different endpoint, router.route. Yep, it's Airbnb. <coughs> so let's call it um, EID, what do you want, right? So if you want to delete something, you need the ID of that document, right? In order to delete them. And then here I do delete. Uh, you can name it ID, it's okay. But let's name it EID so that we're not, we're not confused, right? EID means experience ID. Later on, we will have RID, which is review ID, right? Okay. So delete now, I'm, I need to create a function to delete that. So I'm gonna do delete um, experience without S. Okay, and now I need to import it. In order to delete, you need to check if that user is the owner of uh, that experience. First thing first, are you logged in? If you're logged in, are you the user of that or of that? Are you the owner of that experience, right? So I may need this. Boom, boom. Put it here. Come up. Right? You don't need this host required because if you are the owner of, later on inside our code, we have a condition to check if you're the owner of the uh, experience. If you're not the owner, of, uh, if you're already uh, the owner of the experience, <coughs> obviously you're the host. So I don't really need to check if you're the host. Just in case you can add it here, it's okay. Just in case. 
you may or you may not need it, but that's okay. Both work. Right, so we have an, an, an endpoint which we will need the experience ID, and then we use uh, this function to delete the document. So now we need to define this function, delete experience, and go to experience controller, define it, it's box dot the name and then equal right here here's the interesting part we want to reuse the function right so i'm gonna name that function delete one okay delete one one mean delete a document yeah okay so delete one now Delete one, we need to pass something in that we are, we would say, uh, tell a function to understand which, doc, which document or which model we want to delete from, right? So here I want to delete from, just, just code it once and then I'll define the function. You see the reason why we need the model here. Um, I'm gonna call it ESB, okay? The name of the model, not really the name, the, the, uh, the variable of the model. ESD, then you need this function, delete one, import it. From, uh, handler factory, okay, handler factory. Now let's delete this function again. <laughs> Go in here, create a new file. Handler factory .js. and then we can define here more to Xbox, sorry, Xbox dot delete one something. Okay, it's gonna be something. All right, go back here. I will show you again. I want to use this function to delete user. To, oh, no, 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 no user, please <laughs> to delete experience to delete review maybe something else that you want and so right here i want to delete an experience right so i need to pass the model experience and here's i import it from my soon to be handler factory create that file define the function and then export it right so now you can use async here. Request, respond, next. It's, this is a normal function, right? So now we, because we pass in the model, we need to pass a model like this. So this is an argument. Okay. okay. Right, so function return another function. Here we go. This delete one is a function, model is an argument, right? And this function return another function. Okay. Uh, so that we can differentiate which document you want to delete. From, uh, which? Uh, actually, document belongs to the model, right? Uh, so which model you want to delete the document from? All right, for example, we have two cases. Delete a document from the experience model and delete a document from the review model. So in this case, it's going to be ESB here. Right? And then again, later on, we want to call delete review. And then we want to pass, we have to pass in a review model instead of experience. Let's, let's finish the experience first. All right, so how do we delete? Normally, how do we delete it? Can you try and help me? Try and cache here. All right, we have try and cache. We also have like cons dot equal to model dot five. One and delete 
okay and in this uh, method what's the argument sorry it's an object and why is it the object you may call it filter or conditions right so you want to delete the document that match the condition what is the first condition which id the id of the document right no body no more body it's for arms yeah why why do we need to require it's request yeah request okay so call stop we have id underscore id which is the id of the document so it's going to be request dot params dot no dot pid i name it the id so now another thing comes up all right so eid or id so let's type first and see well, what's this one experience id yeah we we will we will handle that case uh that uh, that logic but first let's type it down what else we have host id right press dot user dot id so it should be like this but now you if you want to delete a review there's no field as such as host it's going to be user right it's going to be user request or user id something like this and the id here is not correct as well it's going to be um, review id for example okay so how do we handle the uh, so how how do we want uh, how do we make it dynamic the object here dynamic uh, mm, oh magic why do i have it twice <laughs> all right okay magic all right so now we need to handle it dynamic dynamically we can check it like this you have something called model and inside model you have something called model name so you can check the name on the model and then you handle case by case right so you can do if model dot model name so the model name here will be the string which you define inside your model object uh, here we go we we name it ESB, we name it tag, we name it user. Oh God, I don't have review. All right, I, I will have to go back and re review now. All right? Okay. Uh, <coughs> where am I? Um, okay, handler factory. So if model dot model name equal to ESB, okay. What do you want to do? <laughs> because name it differently. How do you check it? It's just JavaScript. JavaScript. It's just JavaScript. Think, think a little bit. Mm, yeah, just think. You may run into these kind of problems a lot. So let's try to think. So instead of instead of putting the value inside object like this, I'm gonna create a, a object, a dynamic object, let object, or let filter object. You can name it anything. It's an, an object, right? Right, and here we go. If the year, the model is a uh, model name is experience, I'm gonna do Filter object dot underscore id equal to request dot params dot eid and then filter object dot host 
equal this. Okay, I'm gonna copy and paste. Um, request dot user dot underscore ID. Clear, right? It's very really clear. So if the model is experienced, I use this value. So now I don't need to um, do this. I can call filter object, right? Else, else if. Same thing here, model object equal to review. Wait, uh, spelling. Remember the capital. See the name of the model. So I'm gonna copy this, paste, <coughs> change this one to review ID. And this not host, it's gonna be user, right? So there we go. Okay, if you have more model, you can uh, add more <coughs> else if, or you can use switch case, which is better, I think. So anyway, it worked. So I need to use a wait here, a wait model. Okay, now you can check if there's no dog, you return a respawn dot status for all four. And pretty much the same. Fail. Meshes. No shut document file. Okay. So for now we don't we don't need to be specific on what the document is. Like it can be a user, it can be a model, uh, it can be a review, it can be an experience. So just say no document file. I want to keep it simple. Else we catch. I'm gonna cancel up the error as well as return something. Mm. Five hundred maybe. And error. Five uh, hundred. Internal server error. <laughs> like something wrong in our backend code. Right. We will learn it, how to handle it uh, later. So something wrong. Or you can uh, you can send a error message, right? Very similar to the original code. Yeah. So let's try it. I'm gonna start my server. Oh, it's uh, it's live. <laughs> okay. Um. Right now, let's see on the experience that I have. Send. Okay, I have a bunch of them. Let's remove one. First one, testing. This ID. So now I need to create a, another request and say delete. Here we Change the method to uh, delete. Okay. And then you need the, the ID here. So the endpoint is gonna be like this, right? And let's, let's delete it. Okay, something wrong. If you don't see the response right away, that means something wrong in your backend code. You check your terminal. Nope. No. Wait. Uh, experience. Oh, there's no. It's there is, the response is like it's it's not executed. It doesn't hit the response. So I'm, I think I'm. Uh, I did something wrong there. Alright. Um. So here, the mark the hardest error to debug is like there's no. You cannot see the reason, you don't know the reason, right? There's no um, respond, there's no thing in the console, nothing. Can you guess what's wrong? Just guess. Yeah, good one. Before you guess, you need to read the uh, router first. 
go to the router experience. Okay, I had this route. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, really? Uh, yeah, I didn't have it. See, good, good point. So let's check this ID, right? That means everything is fine. Right before the return here, there should be a return, a response, something like here, but I didn't have it. But that also means uh, the, uh, the logic is correct, everything is fine, and I should not see this document in my database. All right, let's, let's copy this uh, ID, get again. Um, oh my god, why, why did it become... Oh. No, no, change to uh, get. Yeah, it's gone, right? Search the ID, it's gone. So it's actually gone, but there's no respond because I didn't have this line. This respond status 204.n. Yeah, it's gone. Or uh, else you don't see anything in respond. Your application will be like, it's loading. And after 30 seconds, you will see a, a message. Time out. Okay. So everything is fine. I just made this line. And now let's delete one more. Uh, I'm gonna delete, delete this. For seven ATC. So this one, and change this one to delete URL. Experience. And then the ID, okay? I want to delete this, send, it's done, no content. Right now, if you want to test with user review, it also works, I, I, I'm sure. But right now, I don't have that controller. If you have a controller, you can test with that. That should work. Okay. Any questions about this function? Let's go over, uh, let's start from the beginning when we define the function. So I want to create a function that have an argument model and then that, this function is gonna return another function. And the return function will be our controller, right? So this part is controller. Uh, yes, this part is controller. And this delete one function will return a controller. Okay. And here we call that the wrapper function, the, the factory function. We pass in the other one, experience model. And the rest should be the same. The router should be the same. Everything should be the same. All right. Okay, now. Uh, why do you have this? Uh, sorry, my internet. <laughs> ah, if you don't have that, please. Uh, our app will like it will halt. Like will, it cannot respond. It's we're waiting for a respond command, but uh, like command, but it cannot find that line. And that's why when you hit it, uh, when you hit the uh, the request on Postman, you don't see any respond. It's can it's like, like loading. And then after 30 seconds, you will see an error called timeout. Uh, oh, okay, good question. Uh, this way is softer because when you delete something, you don't need to return anything, right? Just say delete it, complete, something like that. And you actually have a static code 204 to do that, just that. 204 means successfully deleted something. And because you deleted something, you don't need to return any data. Right. You can use that to all um, 
no, you cannot use 204. If you have started 204, there will be nobody. So you can use .n. That's the only way, <coughs> right? Oh, we can only delete the one in red, right? Uh, the, the one that we have, right? We, we can only delete the one that the specific user has created. Yeah. So here, here's the condition. We find a document that is, um, that's have the ID, the correct ID, right? We also have another condition, which the host has to be the owner. The, the current user has to be the owner of that document, right? So we, we are sure that uh, only the owner of that document can delete the document itself, himself, no one else, right? So if you log in with another account and you try to release someone else event or experience, you cannot. If you throw an error, like say uh, 404, no document file. Uh, that's the token. Yeah. Your token is by or something. That is JWT. All right. All right. Uh, the delete is very simple. What 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 about update? How do you do update? Similarly, I'm gonna do. Off. So let's define the function first, Xbox dot update one, right? And you have a model as well, very similar to uh, delete one. So AC in request respond dot next. Yeah. Try to do it on your own, see what happens. <laughs> yes. Yes, Yeah, I explained that to uh, someone yesterday. Um, because uh, you have a couple of middleware, what you call safe, free safe. And that middleware only works uh, with the uh, document query. Uh, document, it's a document middleware, I would say. Um, I think I, I had that explanation on um, the middleware topic. So basically in Mongoose, you have three different type of Middleware. Okay. Oh. Is find one an update an actual function? Find one update, yes. And here. Hmm. No. Hmm. There should be an explanation. I always forget. It. Okay. So you have different type of middleware in Mongoose. That's very complicated. Uh, okay. So you have document middleware. Uh, we will learn it uh, 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 maybe tomorrow or the day after. But uh, just for now, there are a reason why we don't use file one update. We have document middleware, we have model middleware, we have array middleware, and we also have query middleware, right? So we have four type of middleware. And pre-save only work for document middleware. Pre-save, post-save only work for me, document middleware. Okay. And if you want to use file one and delete, file one and update, file one and remove, that is query middleware. So you have to define another middleware function. So that will be trigger on this method. Okay. So right now, let's just stick with this. Um, find something and delete something. That's okay. Uh, if you want to edit something, find that, change it using JavaScript, and then save it back. Right. Keep it simple. We will learn how to make it more like uh, to be uh, more correct using uh, query middleware. 
learning everything at the same time is not good. Step by step. All right. Uh, so here, where am I? Um, I'm here, right? So have you done it on your own? There's one more to check. Oh, did we learn it today? No, not yet. So here's the lab. I have five one and delete, five one and delete. Save in the, uh, the, uh, yeah, so right now you start save. Right now you don't save. Okay, so here we have model.fi, right? We file one. Instead of file one and delete, I file one using these conditions, same thing, nothing different. But after this, you want to modify the data right here. I modify data. So this step, we're gonna modify the data. And we need to dynamically uh, modify it. For example, what we have done previously, for example, I'm gonna call um, title, description, something like this equal to uh, request body, right? That also work. What if you have like 20 fields? <coughs> 20 fields. You will have 20 variables. I don't want that. Let's do something different. Okay, you can allow, you can call allow. Allow is an array. Uh, if you remember the, uh, the meme maker, you also have an array like this, okay? You allow the fields that you are allow the user to update. For example, right here, I have which field? Um, experience, I have title, description, host, tag. So we allow user to change the title, to change the description, to change the tags, right? Three fields, uh, title, Description tags. Right. So now we can check if the request body have extra keys that doesn't match these these value this string the value, we delete them. We remove them completely. There are two way. There are two way. Create another object with these allow keys. Or delete unallow keys from request that body. Which one do you want to go with? That's a way to do it. Uh, power the same, right? Okay, second. So we have for each, right? For um, request that body dot. Mm, now I forgot. How do you look it? How do you iterate all the keys inside an object? What's the method? What's the function? Or oh, what's the, the syntax? Object keys, you generate an array with all those. Generate an array with the key's name, right? There's another way to do that. For in JS. Also work in object, right? For in. Here we go. As you can as you can see, this example, you can use for in for properties in object, and you have properties which is a, right? 
and then object properties. The property here is just a name. You can name anything. For key in object, for example. Let's do it. Let's do it on the browser here. Okay. It's JavaScript, guys. Let object equal um, name. Ah, right? Age 32. Okay. For let key in object. Uh, console log key. There we go. We have name and age. So if you want to wrap the value, you can do like this. Um, What's the key and uh, array or an object? Key is uh, a string. String? Yeah, key is a string. So name is a string. A is a string. The name of the key. The name of the properties. So um, I'm going to do is. Um, then I'm going to do object, console log. Object. This, this one's so bad. Sorry. So keys and then plus space is plus space and object wait object the key name right I'm gonna hit enter again so name is for a is thirty two cool so instead of using object keys, we, we have to generate an array so we can use for in. Right, let's do it. Sorry? Yeah, it's for loop, but it works in object. For object, right? Oh no, for in. Uh, you can cause, you can let anything. You can var, but it's called for and in. You also have for off. But let's use for in here. I'm going to do for cause key in a, in a request a body. okay, and then if the key's name doesn't include in this array, you delete them, okay. So if allow dot include key not include you delete that key delete key um no uh, delete request that body key there we go so you want to go with the second solution option so i delete unallowed keys What's the only allow again? So you you don't want user can change anything in your document uh, uh, in the document, right? For example, in a document you have ten fields. Yeah. You only allow them to change a couple of fields. For example, right here we only allow them to change the title, description, and the text. And by doing so, we can delete the unallowed keys from the request body. Okay. If you don't have this condition, user can change what host as well. Yeah. That's the answer, right? When, when we delete allow key, we basically not allow to change the key. Yes, so, yes. So right now, this object request dot body will have at most three keys: title, description, and tag. Right? At most. Or it can be nothing inside. Okay, now lastly, um, we delete them. Still, we also need to run a for loop as well. Oh my god. Uh, why, why do I have to delete? I'm so fast. Yeah, how how about we just use the first way? If allow include the keys, then we change the user right here. 
user dot uh, it's not user it's uh, doc <coughs> dot key uh, not dot uh, doc key and then equal to request body key right and then finally you save the doc it's, it's, you don't have to run another loop okay so remove the second solution uh, option that's kind of long right so I remove to where here not really another object but um, change the value of top properties in docs according to the allows array Um, no longer delete that file. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> you have to run another loop and yeah. to do that. So we don't want that, right? So we can use for key here. And then we save everything. All right, that's cool. All right, so now I had to move doc up here. Yeah. So if there's no doc, we turn right away. And then if there's doc, we allow, uh, we change something. So move doc up here. If not doc, doc up there. Right. Uh, so now instead of return 204, we return 200. And then JSON status. Okay. Data doc. Yay! Yeah, we are not deleting anything. We updating the document, so we need to return the new value. Yeah. So here another problem. Cool. So allows here, you have to move it up, right? So we have a bunch of problems. We try to fix one by one. So allows by default is an empty array. And then here, if it's spirit, we do allow equal this and change remove cons, change to let. Right? So if it's a review, what do we want to change? Rating and review. Right? So step by step, try to think step by step. So if I do everything at the set, uh, at first, you will like you will have no clue what I'm doing. So here we have we generate code step by step. If the case is experience model, we allow these fields to be changed. If the case is a review model, we only allow these two fields to be changed, right? And here's where we change them and then save them. Okay, let, let's try and then recap. Let's try. So I have experience. I want to change um, this. Let me get everything first. Okay. All right, something wrong. Not file. Yeah. Sorry. So I want to change this to uh, no more testing. The title to no more testing. Create another endpoint. And another request. Update experience. Okay. And update experience is a put request for some or pass request. Okay. URL experience. And then the ID. Okay, so now we need to create the endpoint. We have the function, we have the handler, but we don't have the endpoint. Let's go back to the code. Uh, create another one. Um, update experience. Do I have it yet? No, okay. Update experience equal to update one. 
we also pass in the experience uh, model. All right, so now I need to import it, comma, save, and then in the router, create endpoint. Mm, here we go, dot, part. We have delete, we have part, everything the same. Update experience. Update experience. Okay. Right. Very similar. Yes. We define these two functions in the same file, right? All right, so everything is done here. Let's try it. I want to update this to no more tests, the title to no more tests. Okay, let's send it. Okay, the title change. Right. So now you can use this way to update review as well. Also work. Uh, the import we import from the same file. Handle factory, handler factory. <laughs> Inside the handler factory, we define update one. We define delete one. And why do we need user account user? It doesn't. <laughs> yeah, we don't use user. Okay. Hey, okay, recap, update one. Very similar to delete, but there's more things that we need to handle. We need to handle the allows field, right? We don't want user to be able to change everything, including the, the host field or the user field. So that's here we, uh, we define the array that allow user to change. For experience, I allow them to change title, description, and tags. For review, I allow them to change rating and review only. Everything the same. We find a doc. If there's no doc, we turn something. And here is how we change the data based on the allows array. Okay. Using for in is a better practice comparing to object keys and then looking through the whole array. For in also look through the uh, whole object using the key. And then you save it, you change the data, dot key. So basically it will do like this, dot dot user equal to request dot body dot user. Oh, no user, please. Uh, title, right? So instead of dot dot title, I don't know the name of the key. So I use this syntax, square bracket. Right, so there are two ways to assess, to read the value of a property inside an object. This way, or this way. If you use dot, dot title, you cannot make title dynamic. But if you use a square bracket, you can, the key can be anything. It can be any name and it's dynamic. So that's why we have two different syntax. Right. And finally, we save it. The rest will be similar. All right, cool. Ah, uh, wait, tag? Yeah. You want to use update one for tag, or you want to uh, update the text right here? What we're doing now, so when we update the tag, I think we will just follow what you want. It's not just in Riemann, right? It's not cut along the tag, right? It does. Ah, here we go. Because this save trigger this middleware. Oh, oh crap. Wait, 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 wait. Do we have middleware for tag? 
Oh, I had to use it uh, manually like this. Can you go to like the experience controller for a second? Um, experience controller. Uh, what is it? Oh, here. It's very similar. The name of the controller. The name of the factory. All right. Uh, let's get back to uh, Smith question. He wants to change, update the uh, test array, right? So I forgot how I code that earlier on Thursday or Friday. So let me see here. Um, where is it? Experience controller. Oh, you have to do one step here. Hmm. Okay, you have tags. All right. Right. So I'm going to copy the same thing. Uh, where am I? So problems. Now you have a another of one key called tag, right? Yeah. It's dangerous. Now tag is a like a white card, and we have to handle it. To two. Yeah, a new one. Totally new. Yeah. So if you want to add more, you need to create another endpoint, or maybe uh, another middleware. So here we have two ways we can handle everything inside the model, inside the controller, like how we did here, like so. Or we can create a method, a pre-save, pre-save, <laughs> a pre-save hook to do this only. All right, let's create a pre-save hook. Oh, this extra um, resave hook. It should be in experience. experience yes, it should be in experience. So right now we don't have any re uh, re hook, right? And we don't need this. Uh, delete that. So I'm gonna do schema dot re and then save, right? Function. Request respond next. Uh, experience model. So, <coughs> so question from Smith is that if the user provide a tax array, then we have to do this logic, right? And then put a tag in there. Oh yes. You can copy and paste. It's like this. Uh, I can do it like here. You can do if tax request a body dot tag, right? And then call uh, instead of calls a new one, you're gonna do request dot body dot tag. It's, it's s sorry equal to a wave and then the model dot convert to object tax. That's one way. I think let's go this way because if you refine a uh, a method, it's gonna confuse people. Yeah. Right. So here we go. So if there's a request that body attack, we convert the string into object ID, yeah. and then that's it. Okay. Good question, Smith. Okay. Right. And let's remove this. Oh, it's really. So let's try it and test it. Uh, I successfully changed the, um, how do you say, uh, the title. What if I want to change the tag as well? Right, so right now, let's see all my tags. I don't have that. So how do I see all my tag? Tags. Okay, I'm gonna change everything back to only testing. Okay, instead of five tags, I want to change it to one tag. And here we go. Um, X, an array of one string. Send it. Oh, it's not a function, right? Uh, sorry. Um, it's tag. <laughs> it's not model. It's tag. And there, you need to import tag, right? 
again send okay there we go uh, change this one uh, from model to type sorry i made mistake there where is it uh here uh where is it And then like uh, write action or something and do, do change to, I mean, yeah let, let's see let's see i want to change it to um which one do you want uh, just write the screen action oh yeah that's screen action oh yeah okay. oh wait 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 we we can we can use that as well let me see uh experience controller yeah Task can be a string. Let's see. Um, computer? Okay, it's computer. It, it does link to computer. This ID is from computer. And we will have one more tag, which is very stupid. Take a look. This tag is very stupid. I made mistake earlier. I put in the, the ID stream. Okay. If we go back to the experience group. So this one will be the computer in the experience. Yeah. So here we go. You see only one tag, which is the computer, and the ID is end with 6348, right? So 6348 here. So if you want to change the bug, I expect the ID to end with FE3. Okay. Every tree. Can you go back to the experiences route? Yes, sure. Uh, experience route? Yeah. Experiences. Experiences. Um, So there's a better way you can create a uh, a method set, uh, a, a pre hook set, and then you check if the text field is changed or is modified. You will call this. Ta -da. <laughs> that way you you don't need to uh, include these. Yeah. Right, questions. I think people are sleeping. Oh my God, yeah, that's enough. All right, guys, let's recap. All right, recap, recap, recap. Very similar to delete. I create a future object. And then the value of a future object will depends on the model name, right? One thing, done. Also, we, uh, we for example, if you want to update something, you need a filter, and then you, we need the content to update too. So here's the field that I will, the users will be able to update depend on, depending on the model as well. So it could be title, description, tag, or rating, reviews, right? And then we file the document. Document here can be review, can be experience, or anything. And then we look through the uh, request body and then change one by one in the user, uh, in the document object, one by one. After we change everything, we save. Okay, that's it. But a big problem occurs, and Smith mentioned it. What if user want to change the tags? So here we have to repeat the same logic. If there is a tag inside the body object, request the body, we want to turn that tag up, uh, array of string into array of object. We already do this, uh, did this on Thursday or maybe Friday. Friday. Yeah, okay. So that's pretty much it. And okay, this function is a, a factory. A factory means it will return a function. So the return function here will be our controller. Okay. And that. When we call it, we have to call it like this. Factory and the model. And then just put in like how we normally did. Call it. 
was like dumb. God saved. Is there like something like behind the scenes in that updates the database? Yeah, actually docs save. It trigger this middleware, the document middleware. So we have a bunch of different uh, type of middleware, right? Four types. Document, model, array, and query. Here we go. So we have four types and depends. The type will be triggered using this method. So this method will trigger document middleware. Bam. This method will trigger query middleware. And this method will this method will trigger the array middleware and insert many. Insert many is special. There's a couple of special method. For example, remove. So I'm gonna copy and paste uh, this. I'll keep this one. You're gonna read this a lot in the future. Keep this link. I'm gonna send it to you. Uh, here. Okay. Keep this linked. Keep it somewhere. So we save. The reason why we can use a re hook, uh, a re save middleware is that we save. So here in this case, you allow user to update the user as well, uh, user model as well. So else if Model name equal to um, user, right? You you also allow a user to update something in user as well. For example, name or profile, something like that, or even password. But if you update password, it trigger reset middleware. This this middleware. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, don't worry about the query and uh, and document right away. We will learn it tomorrow or maybe the day after tomorrow. All right. Let's take a break and then go back and learn how to do error handler. For for, for error handler, you can copy and paste. Don't worry. I advise you to copy and paste, please. <laughs>